is there actually a formula? And the answer is, yeah, uh-huh, there is. So let's get right to it. This formula was created by a young professional named Dar Mam, and he researched other viral videos in order to figure out what in the world created a viral video. And oh my God, why did I do that? Oh, thank you, Shadow Wolf. I appreciate that. He asked a question. His question was not. How do you get a video to go viral? His actual question was, how do you create content that's worthy of going viral? And this is the one thing that I think people don't really get about viral videos. And if you go and you look at what is a viral video, you're gonna start to see a pattern. And there is actually a pattern to this. There's actually a formula to this. And there are things that all viral videos have in common. And this is what we're gonna go over right now. Okay. So there is a 10 step formula that literally works. So on the eve of his 34th birthday, Dar Man made a wish. And his wish was for a viral video. And he said he, he posted his first motivational, get that, motivational video, hoping it would go viral. And the reason was because it was his birthday. He figured at least his friends and family would, you know, help that video get momentum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the truth is, he was wrong. <laughs> he was really wrong. In fact, the video flopped. It totally flopped. But he kept testing. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him before I keep going so that you have an idea of who this guy is. When Darman was only 19 years old, he started his first business in college. And he started it because he had posted, he got, he was in a lottery to get an apartment. And he got picked for this really amazing apartment, but he needed a roommate to be able to pay for it because he won the lottery, but he still couldn't afford it. So he got a roommate by posting like 75 or 80 signs all over campus and in every single building and even locally, any businesses that would let him post a sign. He pretty quickly got a roommate, but what he realized from all the other people that responded was that there was actually sort of a real need for apartments. And instead of thinking to himself, ooh, there's a real need for roommates. No, he was a really smart kid and he thought to himself, wow, we need more apartments in this city. So he opened his own mortgage company. I mean, he was 19 years old. I don't quite understand how he did this. But he opened his own mortgage company and he ended up hiring 40 college kids to work for him. And what he did was he just started calling businesses everywhere and realtors everywhere and real estate people and saying to them, listen, you guys, you know, there's this huge market for apartments. I think you should buy houses and turn them into places for students to stay. And he ended up getting all these people to refinance their mortgages and to take out loans and all kinds of stuff. It was pretty amazing at 19 years old. Okay, so fast forward, he somehow loses this business or sells it or something. And he starts another business when he's 24. And this business does gangbusters as well. And then things happen and turn and churn, et cetera, et cetera. And by the time he's in his early thirties, he's broke again. Okay. So now he's already had two major businesses. Now he's broke again. So one of the things that he decided to do one day when he had $600 left in his pocket was go to a party. So he goes to this party and he meets this, this beauty influencer. She's an Instagram beauty influencer. 
And he's talking to her and she says to him, you know, I've got all these followers. I've got a ton of followers, but I don't know how to make any money from that. Like, I don't even have a website. I've got like nothing. And he said, oh, well, I know how to do that for you, even though he didn't. I can do that for you. So what he did was he figured out how to turn her beauty uh, Instagram into a business by getting her to make videos. This is where this is all heading, okay? Getting her to make videos. And with his $600, he spent $400 on equipment and lights. And he spent $200, get this, is hysterical. He posted on Craigslist, will somebody build me a website, a subscription website for $200? And everyone said, you're crazy. And finally, this guy responded to him and he said, well, I can do it for 400. So he said, okay, I can pay you 200 up front and I'll pay you the balance when we start making money. And the guy said, fine. Long story short on this, he had $600 in his pocket, started filming this girl, posting the videos, but she had this huge following. And they decided to make it a subscription model, a membership, right? So they built this website and it's got all of this backend SEO on it. And it's for people to sign up to learn how to do their own makeup and become beauty people, right? I know this is a long story. So what happens is they get all the website ready. He goes to sleep. He wakes up in the morning and his inbox is flooded from PayPal with $19.99, $19.99, $19.99. So what happened when he calls the web guy and he's like, PayPal's not working. You got to fix it. I don't understand what's going on. We've got a problem. And the web guy gets back to him and says, there's no problem. This is for real. You're like making all this money. And in day one, they made $60,000. So, okay. So this guy knows how to make money. So fast forward to he's 33 on the eve of his 34th birthday. And what does he want now? Here we go. He wants to make a viral video. So he makes this motivational video and it flops, but he decides he's going to keep testing it because he's got a history of doing things right, right? So he tries a bunch of different motivational videos for months and months and months and they're not working, okay? It's not working. So he finally decides, all right, I guess I'm not going to make a viral video. Like I thought I could do it, but I guess I'm not really good at it and he's going to give up. So he posts his final motivational video, but then something happened. Something absolutely incredible happened after months of him doing this. And his final viral video went viral. And at first it got 10,000 views in less than an hour. Then within 24 hours, it was shared over 50,000 times, which is incredible. Then, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And today that video has been shared, shared, that's not views, by over 3 million people. And it has over 100 million views. That was his first motivational video. So what did he do? What did he do to finally crack the code? Does anyone have an idea? Well, so one thing he did was only two years ago, because this was 2017 when he cracked the code, guys, okay? So in 2018, in May of 2018, he starts his YouTube channel. Today, he's got 3.38 million subscribers and over a billion views on his YouTube channel in two years. Not even, this is like in a year and a half. So it's not one viral video, it's multiple, multiple, multiple viral videos. So this is what he said. To make a, a viral video, there is no magic bullet. There is no right time to post. You know how everybody says, well, when should I post? When should I post? Well, there is no right time to post. There are no right hashtags to use and you should not spend a ton of money advertising and marketing it. It begins and ends with a story 
that evokes some kind of an emotion. So this is really interesting, isn't it? So what he's saying is, number one, make a motivational video. Number two, make a story. So haven't I told you guys over and over and over again that your videos need to start an end, have a beginning, a middle, and an end, like a story, like a real story, so that people have a logical sequence to follow. But what he does is he creates motivational videos that have a story that is somehow motivational, inspirational, aspirational, all kinds of things, and this is one of the keys. So let's keep going. This is his 10 step formula. Number one, 10 seconds. Number two, emotions. Number three, visuals. Four is a twist, five is memories. Six, them. Seven is hot button. Eight is consistency, the word that you've heard from me probably a thousand times. Nine is platform, that's interesting, right? And 10 is production. So let's deep dive into what does that mean? Well, number one is the first 10 seconds of your video have to hook your viewer and get them invested in the story or it's not gonna work. And he has tried so many different things that he knows it is the first 10 seconds. And literally he said, Within the first three seconds, people are like teeter-tottering when they, when they look at your title. So you need to have something dramatic, emotional, impactful, something happen immediately to get them involved and get them invested in your video. The kind of emotions that he says work are sadness. Like if you start with something sad, but it can end up good, right? Happiness, it starts out with someone super happy, but then maybe in the middle something bad happens, right? Fear or anger, motivation, laughter and excitement. So these are the kind of emotions that you want to invoke in people. You need a strong hook. I am showing you a thumbnail of one of his videos and every single video thumbnail looks like this. And when you go to his YouTube channel, which I'm sure all of you are going to do, you're going to be kind of shocked because it's almost, I mean, I felt like, I don't know, if, when you go to the grocery store, do you remember the National Enquirer? Enquirer? It was that publication where it was like, woman gives birth to three-headed child, you know, aliens come down and eat blah, 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 or cows are flying through there, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, that was the impression that I got when I went to his YouTube channel. But then I looked at the views and the subscriber count and everything, and I was mind blown. Okay, so Gold Digger breaks up with broke boyfriend, lives to regret it. Do you notice how all of the text, it starts big and giant, and as you read, it gets smaller and smaller. That's very interesting. He also breaks it up with white and blue text against a black background and a big giant face on the side of the thumbnail. And when I tell you that the thumbnails are all almost the same, when you go and look at this, you won't believe it. But guess what? This video is his highest watched video of all of his videos. It got 18 million views. I have a question. Is yes. that an actual video? Oh, wait. Wait, Sal has a question. Let me pop over to Sal. Hi, honey. Hello, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that actually a video about um, that woman being a gold digger? Now, see, this is a fantastic question because Sal did not know what these slides were going to be. So this is an actual question from Sal. Or is it about using a strong hook? I don't know what, if it's either or. What is the video about? Is the video the actual video of the gold digger breaks up with broke boyfriend lives to regret it? Ha ha! Okay, so what he does is he hires actors. He writes a script. What? I swear to you, this is the truth. This is the truth. Come on. He writes a script. What he does is he tries to find something that so many people have experienced. Isn't that something? That's something. I know. So many people have experienced. 
or something that so many people want to know about, like what if, what if this happened? What if that happened? What would happen, right? So he writes the story, he hires actors, and almost all of them are the same in almost every video. This kills me also. Like these are almost always the same people, but so it doesn't doing, matter. Are they it doing doesn't matter. Recreations? Is that what they're doing? Yes. So it's not even that they're doing recreations. He literally writes this story from scratch. Dar writes the story. And then he hires the actors and they <sighs> film this story. It's like, um, you know, if you were watching that TV show, True, True Lies or True Whatever. So you the know? story is a bogus story and he makes it come to life. It's not that it's a bogus story. It's that it's sort of based on things that have happened to people, but it's his story. Like he makes up the characters and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> He's really cool. Okay. okay. So he creates a strong emotional reaction from the viewer immediately. That's number two. Create a strong emotion from your viewer immediately. And it can be surprising. It can be shocking. It should be something that makes people go, what? You know, like that's the kind of thing that you want. Here's another one. This got 14 million views. Car, car salesman humiliates, and humiliates is in giant caps, right? A poor customer and lives to regret it. So are you noticing a theme here? And lives to regret it, and lives to regret it, right? So the other thing that I did for you, and look at this fun little arrow. Oops, wait, I think I did a, I think I, I think I didn't make my little arrow high enough. I gotta make my arrow higher. Okay. You should host a Zoom. Wait. We've got a comment from Shadow Wolf. You should host a Zoom call so people could video voice interact. Fabulous idea. Fabulous idea. So I love this idea, Shadow Wolf, and I just may do that because Sal and I on Thursdays are doing live channel reviews and it's a fantastic time for people to be able to comment in the chats and stuff, but it is more fun, right? Right, right, It's right. more fun when people can just interact. So I love that idea. Thank you. That's a great idea. Live from okay. Arizona. So look, I've got my little arrow here now, guys. Isn't this fun? Um, look at this. Oh, there it goes. Do you see this, 736? So, so many people think, you know, you got to make short videos, you got to make short videos. The truth is you do not have to make short videos. You have to make a story that's complete. And you should make it as concise as you possibly can, but you need to have enough time to tell the story so that it evokes the emotions that you want it to evoke. And that's what's interesting about him. I'm just going to re... re uh, wind here for a second because I want you to see what I'm talking about. Do you see this? Nine minutes and 28 seconds for this video. It is almost a 10 minute that. video. I didn't see that. Right. I mean, and so this is the thing is that so many times people think, oh, I've got to make, you know, short videos for people to watch them. And that may be true of some content. But when people say to me, how long should my video be? My answer always is the same, right? My answer is always the same. Right. It needs to be as long as it needs to be to get your complete point across, your complete story across without fluff, without boredom, it without adding too much. It has to be compelling. Much. It has to make you want to see what happens at right. the end. That too. That, the bottom, that, that too. That's... Like if, if you make it too short. Or what's going to happen next. Yeah, because, right. you know, if you think, oh, I got to smash everything into five minutes and then you don't get that two more minutes worth of whatever emotion you were trying to evoke from people, you blew it, right? Correct. Right, you blew it. So it needs to be long enough so that you get the views, you get the emotions, you get the impact that you're trying to create. So don't cut it short. If it needs to be longer, make it as long as it needs to be. Hey, look who's here, Sam. Sam, hey, look who it is. 
It is our Sam Santiago from Arizona Living. I started using Ecamm to stream with an Elgato Stream Deck. Thanks for the suggestion. Sam, I love Ecamm so much. You are so welcome. Ecamm is what I am using right now, and I'm just having so much fun with it. And see how I'm, I'm literally on my side. You guys can't see me moving this, but I am moving this arrow up and back and around. Uh, from my end and I can do overlays and I can, I mean it's just so much fun this Ecamm so eventually I'm going to do a tutorial on Ecamm as I learn it and get better and better at it so you are welcome Sam and if you don't know Sam Santiago Sam is one of our YouTube masterminds and Sam's channel Arizona Living AZ Living is all about living in Arizona and where's a good place to live, where's not a good place, etc., etc. And Sam's hilarious, so you might want to check that out. Sam Santiago, Arizona living. <laughs> That's so. So, okay. Here's another one. Look at this one. Mean girl fat. That isn't even a sentence, right? That's just like a bunch of words strung together. Mean girl fat shames woman. So what it should say is mean girl Fat shames woman, that's the way you're supposed to read it. She then lives to, to regret, regret her decision, right? Yeah. Lives to regret it. Everything is lives to regret it. This got, look at this, guys. This got 12 million views, and this one is 8 minutes and 13 seconds. So again, don't think that you need to cut this stuff short. You do not need to cut this stuff short. This is what Dar said. People won't always remember what you said. And that's true. People won't always remember what you said. Shadow Wolf has a comment. Oh. Okay, so Shadow Wolf says, my videos are generally made to be longer only because they're gaming videos. And I use a Discord server, which I use to add video content. I chat with other people and live stream there. Right, so it really, really, that's a great comment. Thank you, Shadow Wolf. It really depends upon what is your content about. So if you are gaming and you're, you're literally doing your game, yeah it's going to be longer because you're playing a game, right? So you do need more time when you're doing that. You do need to post longer when you're doing that. Now, if you were doing yoga, right, or you're doing exercise or something like that, again, you do need to make longer videos. Or let's say you're doing like um, Dale. If, if, if you were to do a hiking video, Dale does um, Wandering Ancient Paths, that's the name of his YouTube channel, and it's all about going in the Southwest and looking at petroglyphs and wonderful hiking places. Now, if he were to just cut it short to try to fit it into a certain amount of time and he missed out on some fabulous things, that would be bad, right? So you got to make it as long as it needs to be, but no longer, but no longer, okay? No fluff, just make it as long as it needs to be. Boss threatens to fire a worker, you won't believe what happens next. Okay, so there's a new twist, right? You won't believe what happens next. So now he's like getting you in, like what is gonna happen next? I can't believe the boss threatened, great word, right? Threatens to fire a worker. Everything about it is incendiary, like you just don't even know what I to know think what about this. He lives to regret it. <laughs> what, honey? He lives to regret it. <laughs> And this is true. And see, this is There's the a key. theme going on. See, do you see this theme? You see this theme? There are themes to viral videos. Yes. So he said, people may not remember the words you used, but they will remember how you made them feel. And you know what's true about that? And Sal and I were talking about that. We were talking about that this morning. And it's true that you can you can say that you watched a, a show or you watched a person talking or something like that, right, honey? Right. And you just think, oh my gosh, that person was so much fun to watch or that person made me feel so great or God, I can't believe all those wonderful things that they said. And then, you know, you say like, well, what did they say? And the answer almost invariably is, well, I'm not sure what they said. I don't remember exactly <laughs> I don't remember what, what they, they said, said, but they were very motivated. But they were good. <laughs> <laughs> they were really good. And they were good. And I, and I, I enjoyed watching right, them. Right. I enjoyed it and I loved it and I want to watch them again. So what did they do? They evoked emotion. They made you feel like, wow, that was really cool. Yep. I want to see it again. Okay. So Dale said, length is only as long as it has to be for your best content. I totally agree. 
Thank you, Dale. I like reinforcement. And hey, you guys, I'm just gonna pop back to us. Don't forget to like this video because, you know, we love those likes. You know I love those likes. Ah. Okay, evoke emotions. So this one, look at that, 11 million views. 11 million views, nine minutes and 29 seconds this one is. So you want to know what's going to happen at the end of this. What happens next? In order to get your video shared, and this is what makes a video go viral, is share, okay? It's not the views, right? You don't get the views without the video being shared. So that is the key, is that you have to make it so that people want to share your video. and. That is the key. So emotionally move your audience and they will be moved to share your content. And that is what Dar said. Number three, let the visuals tell your story. Hello, video is visual, right? But that's not the only reason why. How did you get away with using M&Ms with no legs? I got to <laughs> ask that question. I got to ask. Honey, I'm the one that put all those in. And oh, they're from, put those in? I put all, I did all of this. Who do you think did all these slides? No, no, I thought that the, the, the M&M what? guys, they're not his. What are you talking about? The, this. No. no. Oh. Okay, so I am the one who creates all these slides and I am the one that gets all the visuals. They're all from Pixabay. If you're not oh, familiar with sake. Pixabay. I thought that was part of his thumbnail. I'm no, sorry, this I is all me. This is all me. All right, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you cannot rely on dialogue because so many people will watch a video without sound for so many reasons. Like what if somebody's in bed and they don't want to disturb their spouse, right? And they want to watch a video, they're going to listen maybe with headphones, but maybe not. Maybe they're just going to watch it. Like I often just turn the sound down and watch videos with um, um, subtitles. So you cannot rely on the dialogue. What he says is your video should make sense without sound. So if you were just to watch it yourself, your own video, do you know what's happening? Can you follow the storyline? And if you cannot follow the storyline, you must make it better. It's your video, right? So in a viral video, you don't need sound. You can, you can look at the video and completely understand everything that's going on. That's one of the things. Okay, so you've got to use strong visuals that make the story easy to understand. Easy is the word, easy to understand. <laughs> Many people also watch his videos, Dar's videos, and do not speak English. Isn't that interesting? So he has a huge following of people that don't speak English. And one of the reasons is because he is um, his heritage is East Indian. So he has a lot of people from other countries that are watching his videos and he wants them to understand everything without having to know English, which is really super smart, right? Strong visuals allow the audience to experience, there's the word, experience the story on a deeper level than just words alone can achieve. And this is the magic of video. And this is why I have said to you guys so many times, use B-roll, you know, don't just make it you the whole time. Use a ton of video visuals because if it stays on one thing too long, that's boring, right? It's boring and you don't want to be boring. You want to be interesting and exciting and compelling and you want people to watch what it is that you are showing. Kim says strong visuals plus clear audio is key. You are so right, Kim. And I have also said that so many times. And the funny thing is, of course, and thank you for saying that, Kim. I appreciate you. The funny thing about that, of course, is that Sal and I tested everything before we started this um, <laughs> video. And then right at the beginning, we didn't have sound, which was because the Yeti was still blinking. And what that means is the mic's not on yet. So you muted. have to you have to push the button in on the Yeti. So unmute, the, it. Uh, unmute it, right? So uh, there's always something, right, guys? Always something. 
So remember that video is a visual medium. Number four, end with a twist. Find a way to surprise and your video will thrive. I didn't say that, Dar said that, but I think that's really fun. Find a way to surprise and your video will thrive. So what does he mean by that? Well, he always ends with some kind of a moral or some kind of something that people need to learn, you know, experience at the end of his videos. So boss threatens to fire a worker. You won't believe what happens next. But then at the very end, it's here is what it says. Bosses need their employees just as much as employees need their bosses. So what he does is he shows in his video that by threatening his employee, he was losing out. The boss was losing out on a good employee and he wasn't even understanding what the gold was that he had in front of him. So what he does is he makes videos that make you think, oh God, you know, I had a boss like that or I knew someone who had a boss like that or gosh, a friend of mine went through the same thing, right? This is what he does. He creates videos that you think to yourself, oh yeah, I can relate to that. It's so smart. So Shadow Wolf says, should someone keep the raw films after they upload the videos or delete them? And the answer to that is, it depends upon whether or not you want to reuse your video for something else. If you keep it, use an external hard drive because they take way too much space. So that's the answer to that. Thank you for the question. I had asked that question too, remember? And Sal asked the same question, so <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> Okay, Gold Digger breaks up with broke boyfriend, lives to regret it. At the end of the video, if someone doesn't believe in you during your worst, then don't let them celebrate with you during your best. He always has it in such a way that it's easy for you to remember what his little wrap up is about the video. But the truth is, you watch a video like that and you're like, God, she's horrible. What's going to happen? Is he, you know, is he, is he going to go back with her or who knows what's going to happen? And then you, you feel compelled to watch the whole video. And then at the end, it's like, huh, okay, that's interesting. That's what happened. So, hey, look, Michael's here. Only 63% of YouTube audience has English as their primary language. Yes, Michael, that is true. And thank you for that comment because what Michael is saying, Web Wildcatter, what Michael is saying is that why wouldn't you try to get through to as many people as you possibly can? And you're right, Michael, think about other people who don't speak English. So if your visuals are good enough, you're going to get people from all over the world watching your video content and it won't matter if they don't understand English, right? But you can also get your videos translated. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's keep going. Mean girl, fat shames woman. <laughs> she then lives to regret her decision. And what is the bottom line? Have compassion for strangers. Well, that is such a fabulous thing to say, isn't it? because you never know what people are going through. You never know what's on the other side of why does someone look like that or act like that or anything, right? You don't know. And all of us, all of us prejudge. And I mean, it's, it's terrible, right, honey? It is terrible. I didn't understand what that, that meant. Mean girl, wait, mean, what did it say? Mean girl fat shames. In other words, oh, it's shame. like, how could you be so fat? Who is okay. she to say, like, how can you be so fat? But that's what she does. She's like, you're so fat. Get out of okay. my way. Right. So, right. uh, but the truth, the truth is he's creating something that you respond to. He's creating something that you react to strongly. You have a strong emotion about that because whether or not you're a fat girl or whether or not you're the mean girl, still you know someone like that right yeah, but it's compelling because it's like the tabloids it's exactly what you said it's like right? the tabloids it's they like put the tab headlines up there so that you have to see what it's about you have to look 
fuck? And, and if like, you just start looking just to see what it's about, then it, it, that's why he gets them hooked. And then they start, they and, watch the rest of it. But that's what creates a viral video. Yeah. So are you watching? Yes, you are. Are you learning from this? Make the viewer feel or learn something at the end of the video. Number five relatable content. What does he mean by that? Well, what he means is, does it evoke a memory? Now, not every single one of them need to, but if you can create content for your viewers that brings back a memory for them, they're going to be much more likely to watch and share your video, creating a viral video. So look at this one. Poor dad can't buy a birthday cake a stranger changes the rest of his life. So already we know that this is a motivational, inspirational video. It got 9.4 million views and it's seven minutes and 41 seconds. So in other words, what, what he means by memory is, wow, this video reminds me of a time when, and that's what you want people to think of when they see your titles. So viral video titles are massively important, massively important. So what you want to do is you want to look at viral videos, look at their titles, look at their thumbnails. How do they happen? How does this make it work? Shadow Wolf has a question. Oh, question. Do people lose interest in a video if it's more than an hour? The answer to that is it depends upon what the content is about. Number one. Number two, is the content being given, is the content being given by someone who's compelling? Is the content being given by someone that you're excited to watch? Are there visuals along with the content? Is it something that you can continue to watch for a long period of time or does it seem like it's repetitive? Is it boring? Is it like the same thing over and over? Is it just a talking head? Does it, does it go in? Does it go out? Do you have more than just one thing to look at? You know, if you're watching one person for an hour, that is a really long time. And if you go to a seminar and you watch a person speaking for an hour, they're either an amazing speaker, right? An amazing, amazing speaker, or they have a lot of visuals to keep your interest as well, or they also ask a lot of questions that the audience can respond to, which makes it interactive. But if it's all just one thing, wow, that can get super boring. So there's no one answer to that. You have to know what the content's about. Okay, oh, wait, let's go back to that one. So angry husband yells at wife. Look at how gigantic and bold yells at wife is. Does not appreciate anything she does. <laughs> and look at this wife. She's like, you can see she's like sucking up her gut and she's like going to throw up. And she's, a, she's a housewife of what state? Of, of like anywhere, <laughs> yeah. right? Like anywhere. She's like any housewife that's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like, I'm not doing anything today? I don't think so, honey. You don't even know what it's like to be home. Uh-uh, honey. Uh-uh, honey. So, <laughs> right? Uh-uh, honey. So, how many people say, oh, my God, this happened to me, right? This is evoke a memory that somebody has of something that happened to them or someone they know. This one got 5.3 million views. This one's only five minutes, which is really interesting. So you don't need a lot of time to create this story, see what happens, wrap it up, and you know get 5.3 million views. So how do you create relatable content? Well, the bottom line is it's not about you, okay? It is about your viewer. So you have to put yourself in your audience's shoes. What are they going through? What is their life like? What kind, of con what kind of motivational, inspirational content can you create that these people are living with and how can you come up with a resolution or a twist on it that makes them feel something hopeful, that makes them feel something inspirational, aspirational, something of value, right, at the end of your video. So, the best thing you can do 
is have the content hit home for the viewer, Dar says, and I agree. So what is number six? Create content for you, the viewer, not for yourself. Everything is about your audience, right? Everything is about your audience. So you, no matter whether a video is viral or, or the goal is for a video to go, go viral or whether your goal is to make a really great video for your audience, your audience is who you're creating content for. You're not creating it for yourself because what's the point of doing that, right? You're creating it for your audience. So you always want to think, is this something that my audience will watch? So Shadow Wolf says, should you make a video if, if you say or think to yourself, it's just good content? Um, you know, if you're making videos, Shadow Wolf, and your viewers are viewing it, your audience is viewing it, and it's good content, and they love it, yes, make a video that's good content. But if you are not getting the views and you are not getting the subscribers, then whatever you think is good content is not good content. It needs to be better. So then you need to figure out, you need to ask people, what is wrong with my content? What's going on here? Why am I not getting the views? Why am I not getting the subscribers? Let people give you constructive criticism and find out why. So understand who your target audience is. I know you guys have heard this over and over and over again, but for a viral video or for any video, you have to know your audience. Just ask them, what do you guys want to see? What do you want to know? What don't you know that I can help you with? What is the one thing that you're dying to hear about? Or what is the one thing that you really want to understand? Ask people. Number seven hot button issues. What is that? Well, it is something current. So if you go to Google Trends, you can see what is currently trending. But, you know, let's say it's a holiday. We know that right now it's November. Thanksgiving is coming up, the holiday of Thanksgiving. So that is going to be trending. We also know that Black Friday is coming up. We also know that Small Business Saturday is coming up and Cyber Monday. So a lot of things are trending right now. A lot of things are happening right now. And we have the post election results, right? So that's a thing that's trending. And we have the pandemic. So that's a thing that's trending. So lots and lots of things are trending right now that you could make videos about. Like, I mean, to make a viral video about people who do or don't wear masks. I mean, that's a pretty obviously simple one, right? So a lot of things that you can do that are hot button issues right now. Great content can organically, this is not paid for, can organically start appearing at the top of search results when a video is going viral. So if you have great content and your thumbnails are dynamite and your titles are awesome, right? This is what can happen. It can start to grow up and up and up in search and become top of search, page number one on Google, page number one on YouTube. Things can happen like this. So what's number eight? Consistency. Consistency is key and you know it, you know it, you know it. So you need to have targets and goals, constant targets and goals. If you don't set a goal and a deadline for that goal, are you going to do it? No, the chances of you doing it are super slim. So set a target, set a goal. Dar says a viral video is based on time and numbers. Time and numbers. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the time. Hello. It's not gonna happen overnight, okay? So when people say, oh my gosh, look, like all of a sudden he's famous. No, it's not all of a sudden. It probably took eight years of hard work, but then something hit, right? And all of a sudden, you know about him. It's not that all of a sudden he's famous, it's that all of a sudden something finally went right. So viral videos are the same kind of thing. You gotta put the time in, you've got to allow them to happen. So post, post, post. Create a schedule, create a schedule. 
and commit to it. And then no matter what, make your videos. So even if you keep trying, you keep trying and you keep trying and they're not doing great, who cares, right? You just have to keep going. There is a Facebook group. I'm just gonna pop back to me for a second. There is a Facebook group that I belong to called Small YouTubers Boost. And I can't even tell you how many people have said, oh my gosh, guys, I was so ready to give up. I, I was so depressed. I was so sure that this was not worth my time and nobody was liking my videos and nobody was watching and da 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 da. And then all of a sudden, I started to get traction. And this is the kind of thing that does actually happen on YouTube when you are consistently posting videos, analyzing them, making them better, making new videos that are better, and repeat, 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 right? But you've gotta be consistent and you can't be wimpy about it. You've gotta say, okay, I'm posting every Wednesday and post every Wednesday. Don't be wimpy about it. If you're gonna post every Friday, post every Friday and tell people because when you say something out loud, all of a sudden it's real, right? And even more, if you say it out loud to other people, that makes it so much realer. And then if you write it down and you put it on the banner of your YouTube channel, now it's real, right? So now you have to actually do it. So this is what I'm saying. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Keep going. Even if it stinks and you're like, oh my God, should I give up? Don't give up. Just keep going. Okay. Dar says, go into content creation with the mindset. Mindset. Okay. It's all in your mind. If you're gonna give up, it's in your mind. If you're going to keep positive and keep going, it's also in your mind. As you know, so many people have said, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you're right as well. So it's in your mind that you are going to keep at it as long as it takes to succeed. That's the word, right? Succeed. Number nine. Create content native to each platform. And that's an interesting thing because you think, you know, oh, I'm gonna post this video, I'm gonna post it here, here, and here, but the truth is that every platform has a different type of audience. And it's not that you're different. So you might be on Facebook and you might be on YouTube and you might be on Instagram, but aren't you looking on those platforms for different kinds of things? Yes, you are, right? When you're on YouTube, you're looking for a certain kind of video. Maybe it's a how to, to. like maybe you wanna learn how to change your tire, or maybe you wanna learn how to do, you know, a painting, or maybe you wanna learn how to crochet. Whatever it is that you wanna learn, or do, or experience, you're on YouTube for that reason. On Instagram, isn't it completely different? Instagram is all about looking at pictures, all about looking at short videos and stuff like that. It's so completely different. Facebook. Facebook is all about connecting with friends and family. So this is going to be something totally different as well. So when you think about the platform and even when you think about yourself on the platform, you're always looking for something different on each platform. So you want to cater to each specific platform. People who visit YouTube, are there specifically to watch videos, not to look at pictures, not to look at GIFs, you know, not to read long form content, right? They're there to look at videos. That's what they're there for. So this is why they're willing to watch longer content. And so when you understand the difference between these platforms, it starts to become simple. People on Facebook have a short attention span, right? They want short, punchy content. But this is why on Facebook, things go viral so much faster. Because everybody's on Facebook like, you know, my friend this, your friend that, my family this, my family that. And then, oh my God, guys, you got to look at this video, right? And that's how things get shared. So you see something that you think is really cool and then you want to share it to other people. Like that just happened with a video about this little girl that Sal showed me that his sister posted and she was playing drums, right? Fuck. <laughs> the cutest kid you could possibly imagine. She's like, like four or five. I think she was like two. No, she wasn't two. She was so young. 
But she, might, she, she was, was little. Adorable. Little. The drumsticks were bigger than her. Oh my gosh. But she was like, she knew how to play the drums, like a pro. It was, it was hysterical. Amazing. It was hysterical. And by the time it. we saw this video, it had 440,000 views. And I don't even know how many shares it had, it, right? It was like up for like an hour. It viral. Was a, it it just was viral. Went crazy. It was crazy. So, um, wait. So Dale said, great topic tonight. And I just. <laughs> And I just thought Darman went viral because he has a cool haircut. <laughs> I know he does, right? <laughs> he does. And he's a handsome guy. It's, it's really, he, he is something else, this Darman. So create for the platform. It's good to focus on just one and get it right there first. And I agree with that so much because what happens is we, we be, we're like squirrels, okay? So, oh my God, I've got to be on Facebook. Oh my God, look, look, this is what's happening on Instagram. Oh, look, TikTok. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, we got to get over to YouTube. Oh, oh, like, you know, stop it. Just bring it down, bring it down. Focus. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Okay, focus. Because what is going to happen is, I'm back to you, honey. Oh. What is going to happen is if you try to be on too many platforms at one time, aren't you going to make yourself crazy? You're going to make. You're not going to be able to focus. You can't I would just focus. Say it. You can't focus. You can't do one thing, complete it, and move on. You really can't. Which is the key. You to... can't. And you can't do it well. I mean, maybe you can be on four or five different platforms, but you cannot do it well without help. Okay, without help. So if you have people working for you, if you have a VA or if you have you know, friends or family or if you hire people that are working for you and yeah, they're posting to all these other platforms, yay you. But if you're trying to do it all yourself, you're just gonna make yourself nuts. So YouTube and one other platform. YouTube, number one, and one other platform. And some people don't even do another platform, right? Like the guy from, we did a channel review of Dead Meat, right? Yeah. For, for Halloween, we did a, yeah. a channel review of this channel called Dead Meat. He just reviews horror movies. Horror movies. And he just does and, YouTube. And TV shows. He just does YouTube. Right, horror, horror TV. And he doesn't, he's not even on another platform, which I think is on, like, wow. Like, I don't even know how he does that, but it's very cool. Okay, so, um, number 10, what is production? What are best practices in production? Make your content length platform specific. And he is so right about that because if you are going to post a 10 minute video on Facebook, how many people are going to watch that, right? If it's two minutes, yes. If you're live streaming, that's different. People will watch a longer live stream on Facebook, but are people gonna watch a 10 minute video on Facebook? I mean, pff, chances, like probably not. Okay, so probably not. So, but on YouTube, yes. Here's the other really interesting thing that's happening currently. Don't get hung up on your production quality. And the reason I say that, and the reason Dar says that, and uh, he and I are in total agreement on this, is because right now, much more realistic videos are working better. And it's funny that he should say that because all of his videos are totally scripted with actors, so they're not at all real, <laughs> like everything is a script. But I, I totally understand what he's talking about. And a lot of that is the way that you film something. And Often it's videos that look like they're shot on a cell phone that do better than super high production videos right now. And the reason for that is because we are so sick of the fake stuff. Like we're all just so sick of it that a video that just looks raw and real and like someone just took their phone out and filmed it and they were like, la 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 la, la right into the phone. That's what people are responding to right now so much better. So don't worry about the production of it as much as you normally would. And the other thing is be real, right? So be authentic because that's what is engaging to people. That's what makes people want to share. Like that little girl that Sal and I were, that we were looking at, she was so adorable. Oh my gosh. And you know, if any of you guys are on my Facebook, you'll see it because I posted it on my Facebook page. 
you do not need to spend a lot of money on this. He does not spend a lot of money on this. What he does is he he makes his content so good and he makes his script so tight that he doesn't have to have a ton of bells and whistles to make it look good, okay? So it's just all about the content story and being consistent. Consistency is the key to building an online presence because if you're just posting once in a while, who's gonna show up? People don't even know that you're real, right? So. The other thing he says is always add subtitles. And the reason for that is because people might not be watching with the sound on, right? Might not have the sound on. So, Shadow Wolf. Sound, but, so it really does matter. So Shadow Wolf says, does self-appearance matter when making a video to keep viewers interested? Oh, that is a great question, Shadow Wolf. You're asking great questions tonight, man. Okay, so here's the answer to that. Sal and I have our own luck, right? I mean, we, we have like, this is us. There goes my camera. <laughs> we have a Hello. this is us look. Totally and our look is, is a professional, like, you know, businessy okay. look we're because back. we're about business YouTubers. We're very serious. Um, but we're all, but we like to have fun. So when we do our reviews or we do our um, Friday happy hours right. or we're doing something like that, then what we look like is however we feel like looking like if we feel like getting all dressed up or if we feel like dressing for whatever we're reviewing or whatever our happy hour is about we're going to do that so do i think that appearance matters i do don't you yeah it's what makes you feel comfortable but right. you also have to think about what would make the viewer and same thing evoke an emotion right so if you want them to laugh right that's great and if you fun. want them to feel like you're you look important enough to talk about what you're talking about because it's a right. serious thing. Right. So, okay, so if you're a gamer like and, and everything and everything that you're doing is about gaming and you want people to relate to you as a gamer, what is it about you being a gamer that people are going to relate to? Are you going to create what we call a persona? And this is one of those things that, um, you know, I have a video about persona that Tom did that's really, right. really excellent. And look on, look on the Zazumi channel about, about how to create a character for yourself as a YouTuber. And it doesn't mean that you're not authentic. What it means is that, you know, sometimes you, you just want to put your hat on and become a certain person for YouTube. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't mean it's not authentic. It means nope. it's kind of like your superhero you for YouTube, right? right. So, yeah, I think it's super important. If it helps to make your video work. Yeah, right? and if it makes your channel work. Like if people expect a certain thing from you all the time, it's kind of fun. Like it's good to get into something that makes the channel not only exciting yeah. for you to do, but it's for also, your viewer. It's also fun if they don't know what to expect. If they're like, oh, what's he going right. to do next? Right, that's another what thing. What is that crazy guy going to do next? Yeah, so very smart. Thanks, Sal. That's a, a really good comment. So, You're very welcome. Okay, so next time, what is going to happen in the next video? How to use viral videos to make money and grow your business. And I know that I posted that the next one would be about using viral videos for holidays, but isn't that the same thing? You're a business. Don't you want to make money at the holidays? How do you use, how do you create something viral that can make you money at the holidays? And what is coming up? Lots of holidays. So I'm going to wrap it up now. The 10 step viral video formula starts with, you gotta hook them in the first 10 seconds. You've got to create emotions. They should have dynamic visuals. There should be a twist at the end. You wanna evoke memories for people. Remember, it's all about them, not you. What is the hot button topic or trend that's happening right now? Be consistent. What platform are you posting to? Are you on YouTube, which I hope you are, and if it's gonna to be to YouTube, it should be longer form content. And then finally, production. What is your production quality? As Kim reminded us, as Kim reminded all of us, and thank you for that, Kim, audio is the first thing people will click away from. So make sure your audio is excellent. And then after that, production quality. Can people see you? Is your lighting good? Can people hear you? 
Like, are your visuals good? Just these are the kinds of things that you want to think about. Okay, we are Zazumi. We are for business YouTubers to boost your income, influence, and impact with YouTube. That's what we are all about, and that's what our channel is about. And if you're a newbie, take my YouTube Masterclass. It is six dynamic modules to teach you everything you need to know to get your channel going, to be successful, to make money. Go to youtubebootcamp.com, click on courses, take the course. And finally, as always, believe in yourself. Just be you on YouTube. You are awesome. You are unique. There is no one like you. So when you make your channel, <laughs> when you make your channel, mom, come over. <laughs> Just remember that it's all about your viewer, but they're watching because of you. You are uniquely you, and this is what you have to believe in. So even if your channel isn't like doing no. gangbusters yet, it will. Yeah, hula it guy. will. I we guess. have Hula Mom behind hula me. Mom. All right, guys. Hula Mom. We are going to do our thank you so much for coming. This is our dating game goodbye. Thank you, guys. We love that you came to see us. See us again next Tuesday. Join us Thursday, Sal and me Thursday, for channel reviews. And if you want your channel reviewed, let us know. And Fridays we're doing happy hour. And the rest of the week, it's whatever I feel like posting. So <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for coming. Have a fantastic Bye, everybody. rest of your night. Thank you, guys.